Paul could have just written a treatise on suffering. It didn't have to be 2 Timothy. It could have been, you know, first sufferings. Huh? Here is a letter to all of you on the doctrine and theology of suffering and enduring. Here are the technical theological intricacies and realities that you need to understand and be able to grab onto in order. But he doesn't do that. He writes a letter to a young man that he loves. The theology is there. Look at verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. I can, can I tell you, I love that. Because here's, here's the way we think. Here's the way that our flesh thinks. And this is why the prosperity gospel gets so much traction with people. What my flesh wants to believe is that when I'm suffering, what I need is the power of God in my life so that the power of God can end the suffering. Amen? I'm suffering. God, show your power and end my suffering. Paul says, share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. necessary this is necessary not just for Timothy but for every last one of us amen this is a necessary piece of the discipleship puzzle but here's the thing don't don't just get locked into this idea that this is all about enduring persecution and has no application to any other setting that that that's no mm -mm. because the idea of preserving and proclaiming the gospel and, and then enduring suffering is not just about enduring a a a perverse governmental agency or entity that is out there destroying the lives of Christians or, 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 or stoning Christians to death. Preserve and proclaim the gospel and endure the war with your flesh that will arise inevitably. Preserve and proclaim the gospel and endure the temptation to be silent about the gospel when your reputation takes a hit. Preserve and proclaim the gospel. And don't you dare back down when those who have perverted the gospel have bigger numbers than you do. Endure that. Preserve and proclaim the gospel and endure when sin desires to overtake you and disqualify you. There's more to endure than impending death. And every disciple of Jesus Christ has to be reminded of this. Of course, th this is like, the apex of the struggle, amen? Somebody's going to put you to death for proclaiming the gospel. That, that's the apex of the struggle. But can I tell you that it can feel just as threatening when your reputation or your finances are at stake It can feel just as threatening, pastor, when, when the numbers start to dwindle 
and you see smiling Joel on TV <laughs> preaching to a stadium filled with people. Do I really have to preach all of this? Do I really have to preach it this hard? Certainly there's a few areas where I can And that's where he gets to in chapter four, by the way. Share with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. And this is sort of the crossover. This is the link. This is the link between the, this heart of discipleship and the consequences of discipleship in the individual life and, and the content, because it's the content that fuels the heart of discipleship. So again, it's not either or. It's not, let's major on the content and let's just get information to people so they can be conduits of information. Or on the other hand, let's major on relationship and leave the content behind because relationship is all that matters. No, these things go hand in hand. And this middle section is where they sort of overlap. Look at it. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now there's a theological explanation. <laughs> 